welcome to the first episode of Get Lit with GT. As I had promised all of you, we would be taking learning out of the classrooms and the design studios and bringing it out along with industry experts and talk about things that we all ought to know now. So, as a part of the first episode, I have with me today my dear friend Manik. Manik is an architect, uh, he's a lighting designer most of the times and uh, sometimes a philosopher. So thanks Manik, thanks for coming over, really appreciate it. Thanks Gautam, thank you for having me over. Uh, the reason for doing that was we've always had these discussions around uh, the role and the relevance of technology in our profession, right? And uh, there's this huge wave of gener uh, generative AI which is now uh, in all spheres of life, in all walks of life, um, from our kids and their education, them knowing about chat GPT to uh, things uh, around how generative AI is just going to turn the world on its head. I feel that our the entire profession of architecture and design uh, is still relatively uh, superficial about it and that's my opinion. I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, daggers drawn as people hear uh, what I have just said. But what's your personal take, generative AI and the design world, uh, what's your personal take on it before we dive any deeper? It's a tool. So far from what I've seen, it's as good as the prompts and your inputs. So really you've got to, I remember going back early days, CAD was just about introduced and it was catching on. It was the same argument. It's now intrinsic to our working. Whether it's one version of CAD or another software that builds in 3D. So it's at the end of the day, these are tools. We've got to use them, mm -hmm. and the way we use them is what's going to produce their output, which is either fantastic mm -hmm. or terrible. So, yeah, that's that's my take on it. It's still very early to see right. how far it will penetrate into the industry and what will be the depth of the integration as time goes by. But I think it still remains a tool. So I am not challenging that. I, again, I am given now this, this venture that I started five years back and the way we have taken this entire journey in terms of adoption of first understanding emerging technologies and then adoption and bringing them mainstream through the work that we ourselves are trying to do. So I am all for generative AI. Uh, my uh, worry or my challenge is that uh, we in our industry, in particular, in architecture and design, have a very superficial level of understanding. And it is a thing that I've been seeing and reading and the posts that I see on social media, things that my friends talk about, you know, that, oh, I am exploring AI tools, etc. But I have still not seen any meaningful uh, generative tool that has come about and made an impact. The way, for instance, uh, we all use chat GPT on a, in our day-to-day -day life today, right? I mean, I personally do a lot of things that I get done with it and I am a big, big fan. But from a perspective of getting it to do our daily task in terms of design, have you actually come across any meaningful uh, generative AI sort of an intervention for the process of design? So far, I don't think I've come across anything that's meaningful as for designing. For image generation, yes. I think there's mm -hmm. abundance of uh, newer websites and tools that have come about. You've got something that's integrating with Photoshop, Firefly. So you've got all that happening. Mm -hmm. However, it's again A, based on its prompts. You ask it to do something, all the videos and all the images we've seen are perfect. Mm -hmm. So which makes you wonder, they're ads. So, yeah. yeah, I like to see the fraud that's my, ones. That's my problem. Yeah, I, I like to see the fraud ones yeah. where you give it an, a prompt and it did something absolutely ridiculous. But that being said, in terms of our industry, I've seen it, these being used for great rendered images, for getting your perspectives corrected, adding some something in the middle of that image, but not for design per se. So, yeah, to, in a nutshell, no, not yet. And that, that is exactly what bothers me. So, get into conversations on a daily basis, mm -hmm. practically on a daily basis, yeah. and people talk about, hey, I am exploring uh, AI-based intervention in the process of design. 
then of course you meet a lot of uh, i get to meet a lot of tech co-founders a lot of them uh, involved in, in really meaningful interventions from a deep tech perspective and uh, when i present them a view that i do not think <coughs> design per se can get generative and uh, ai based 100 percent they do kind of respond back and challenge me on that but my my problem really lies with the fact that the generative ai journey commenced some time back yeah. there have been meaningful interventions in other spheres of uh, life in other professions something as meaningful as what a chat gpt is has not found its way in the entire uh, realm of design building design in particular which goes on to show that listen it's it's going to take some doing for it to happen for it to kind of come to that particular uh, how do i say uh, an insightful sort of an intervention if i may call it that you know so that's that's really it's it is it's the technology yes, it's really very recent yes. it's very recent where i would eventually see this going and how it could potentially integrate with the aec industry how would be probably analyzing data again one of the right. big misused terms big data right yes right <clears throat> what are we doing smart cities what are we doing with all that information now something like this uh, a software or a plugin that can help you sift through the data mm -hmm. pick out the relevant points and then help you in designing so it could be cross referencing from climate climate climatic data to uh, footfall and all those things i mean there are a million things that can be integrated within our design absolutely which we as humans struggle to yeah. um, so having all that information around and if we can potentially just have it filtered down the the amount of data that we generate or the amount of data that is required to make a meaningful build form a meaningful not a banal one a meaningful responsive build form uh, there's so many things that have to go in right and that is where this whole process of uh, AI, generative AI really makes a lot of uh, at least potential for it to get uh, applied in a manner that we can really cut through some of those data driven uh, assessments that we carry out through a meaningful intervention, a uh, dramatic intervention for that yeah. matter. I think brilliant use case. There will be, if there is not already something that's out there, there will be something that will come out pretty soon. I'm quite certain of that. Um, you know the 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 way a building needs to be for it to respond to the climatic challenges around uh, respond to the climatic needs of the that particular build form i'm absolutely certain something is going to come out there as well which brings me to the point of uh, discussion that i wanted to bring in like i said on this other hat that you wear and which is most of the time right lighting uh, i think there could be a very meaningful uh, intervention from an ai based perspective for the lighting design uh, to actually come out in a manner that is suited to that particular function that a building has to, or a, not only just a building, I mean an office interior or a home interior to uh, what is required for a building design uh, or lighting design to be optimal, uh, can or will see an AI based intervention pretty soon. Absolutely, I think it will be fantastic because we can work with something that uh, can help us just design fins, louvers, depending on your mm -hmm. exact geo positioning. And not just that, we can also factor in things like buildings around. And then at what time, maybe this is a leap of faith or wishful thinking, but what time should lights come in, come on at artificial lighting comes in at 5%, 10% so that the occupant is comfortable? And will it vary on depending on the number of occupants? So all those factors, so basically, AI marrying BIM, so that's a lot of acronyms, but it would be <laughs> it is it would be quite interesting to see that uh, preventive checkups on let's say drivers. And of course, that's I'm just we just talking about lighting, but HVAC things, security, fire, predictive things. All right, it's been so long since you've to replace the batteries of your um, carbon dioxide monitor. Can Mm -hmm. And that would be interesting where your uh, AI starts really meshing with the building and becomes more and more seamless. Now this 
can be an extremely scary thought as well. I was it's, it's a, <laughs> why you were thinking I was getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me as I speak. Uh, but if you look, uh, it has the potential of becoming a Stephen King mm-hmm. uh, new novel. But that is possible. Now, should we do it? That's another question. And I'll, I'll stop you there. And I'll, that is the point I want to pick up. That how much do you want AI to get done for you, and how much do you think you, as a lighting designer, want to own up? I mean, I don't want. I mean, when I used to be a designer, I would have ideally liked everything to be done by me. But then I'm talking about 20, 25 years back, right? Right now, in the current state that the profession is in, are we fine with feeding in parameters and? A lighting design coming out, or do you still believe that it is your intervention personally that is required for a superlative lighting design to come out? Early on in the conversation, I mentioned it's a tool, and I firmly mm-hmm. believe it's got to be used as a tool. Mm-hmm. Um, a wrench is a wrench, but it can't do anything on its own. Someone has to turn it and put it in the left, right position. Similarly, I, I think we. Will uh, if we are taking us, us ourselves out of the equation, then it's just an algorithm or something that something that's learned from that algorithm and has processed data. The personal touch intervention, that human element is going to be gone, which I am not in favor of. Mm-hmm. Of course, it will also make our jobs redundant, which is a second scary thought, but. Uh, I think I don't see that happening in our lifetimes, but uh, that might just come and bite me in the rear end. But <laughs> I honestly think if why don't we go back to a time where we everything started being manufactured, be it clothes, be it um, hardware, everything's factory made. Mm-hmm. Now we are back at a point where we want things That's to be yeah. handmade. Mm-hmm. Now, it's I mean, more expensive. That's a good point. Mass produced, yeah, sure. Cookie cutter, literally everything's just factory made. But we come back, yeah, I like it for that little blemish, that little dent in the table, that unfinished polish, which which makes a difference, which makes it unique. I think that's what one's got to turn towards. So if I hear you right. Uh I've heard you say clearly that it's a tool end of the day. Let's keep our aspiration for it to be tool based. What it is going to require uh, for a superlative design to happen is still going to require yeah. what we have up here. Uh, a machine may be able to aid you to kind of better it, but the starting point is going to be up yeah. here, right? Yeah. So sticking with this particular thought and understanding clearly that uh, a tool is a tool is a tool, uh, how much of demand of generative AI or AI based uh, tools are coming from your customers today, the clients out there, do they, for instance, know some products that they come and tell you that, hey Manik, use this, or uh, they it's just a fancy word that they have caught on to and they come and demand that, why are you doing this manually? I, I remember when, again, some 15, 20 years back then, while I was still kind of in the process, uh, in the entire uh, profession of design and build. A lot of customers used to come and tell me, what do you need to do? All you got to do is you'll feed in some parameters into the computer and out comes a drawing and layout and you'll get it done, right? Why do you want to charge such a large <coughs> fee uh, from us? And we used to laugh. Yeah. Uh, but has that aspect come back that your customers are asking you to use generative AI and then are you in a position to kind of tell them and are they in a position to listen to you that, hey, listen, it's end of the day, it's just a tool. Everything I am doing as the design professional here. So I think so far we've been fortunate. Nobody has tried to mm-hmm. demand this from us. Um, most people are very happy when we give them a computer generated uh, simulation that says this is the kind of flux level and these are the visuals. This is what we are expecting. And then after that, we always move towards a mock-up. So that diktat hasn't come through and I don't, yeah, I, I dread the day that someone's going to be like, you've got to use AI. At the end of the day, we've got to design as per what someone wants. So that's where you, 
with the software with the new hat that you wear, you've got to a point where you're also integrating lighting. Yeah. Let me put that back at you. Mm. Have you had architects or lighting designers come back to you and say, hey, can you just, let me just make a box and can you populate it with furniture and lights and everything? Oh, people are going to say, uh, people are going to hate me when I say this. Uh, yes, actually. Uh, and uh, people have said that make this task easier. So actually, uh, let me just bucket this. Let me not just try to make a uh, trivialize this matter. Uh, what people have demanded, including you for that matter, is is the uh, is the ability for the light to behave in a particular manner, so that they could assess the impact of lighting design uh, in a in a in an environment that is not really built yet. So so that those options and alternatives could be quickly uh, prototyped and discussed, and then whatever goes to site is a discussed and an informed uh, lighting design. But the while this school of thought exists, and I respect that, there have also been uh, requests where people have said that, let me just read in parameters and out comes the lighting design. Uh, we have tried to build that, uh, but you know, end of the day, I think uh, what you said, what you need to think, your thinking cannot be replaced. Those parameters that you require to work with are what we have built into the product now. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really glad to hear that, and I'm aching to test it out as we've discussed earlier and um, but the way I look at it in terms of approach and uh, please don't crucify me any of the people around for this but there's an engineering approach mm -hmm. versus an architecture or a design approach where what you've just described to me is parametric parameters if you you've ticked all the boxes you're good but design is not always about that. See, uh, now because we are talking about lighting, let's pick up a um, simple setting, a home, someone's house. You don't look at, I need X number of lux here, I need X number of lux there, and on my dining table this is what I want. It's never like that. It has to change with the time and probably also the season. It's also your age. That's also going to modify the kind of lighting. Uh, of course, the activity goes without saying. So all these factors. So there is no formula that you can feed in and say, all right, I need X number of lux. And that's going to be. Maybe you could, one could do that in an office. But that is what was done before the profession of lighting design came about, mm -hmm. where Right, every X number of meters, you just put a fixture and that's it, done and dusted. Mm -hmm. The most uh, common usage, office floor spaces. And that is what was done and it's been done for the longest mm -hmm. number of years. Um, but however, now people are opening up, people are being conscious about energy consumption, glare, comfort, blue lights come into play. But those are things where that's where the human factor is. Yeah, and again, like I said, I, I don't think I have any disagreement with the points that you've just made. It is uh, just expanding it. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that I'm comparing. Just expanding on the point that you made. Uh, office design just sort of industrialized the entire approach, right? To the uh, to lighting design, three by three grid, three by four grid, yeah. or whatever. Cut, 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 cut. Get the lighting done because that's what. Offices required. They needed an ideal lux level on on the work surfaces. Something else in the cafeteria. Something else in the conference rooms. And everything was standard. And I come from that industry. Yeah, 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 so 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 from that aspect, building a tool that is going to help you achieve that is very easy. But when you come to homes, when you come to customized uh, customized spaces, yeah. it gets extremely challenging. And that is where I still believe that level of thinking that we have been discussing ever since we started this session is extremely important. But uh, all points well taken and I think, uh, like you said, we will have to figure out clearly as to where all do we let this tool come in and support us in our endeavor to build the uh, right sort of environment for the people that we are designing for. And that's that's the way it is going to be. I mean, I keep seeing things. Uh, 
on social media, people saying that design is going to buy, uh, go this particular way, way where you're going to just type, give me a three bedroom home uh, and with ceilings height of be, uh, being here and uh, design is going to come out. Well, if, you're, if, it, if the profession is going to come to that, I think everybody who's studied or is studying the profession of design uh, should be embarrassed. Uh, not not scared. I would say embarrassed because AutoCAD was a tool after all. You know, so so is BIM and so is various other things that we have seen the technology kind of uh, embrace and bring out into mainstream. So working with the tool is absolutely fine. But if you have to type in that create an office space of 500 seats for me or create a building of say 50,000 square meters for me and with these sort of features, the way we write. Uh, emails or things with help of chat GPT, it's, it's probably a bit of an embarrassment for the profession. Would you replace a doctor uh, with AI? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, uh, a lot of people are going to hate us for uh, what we are discussing here. Uh, I would not, but I'm sure there are people out there who are going to challenge uh, and we'll see comments coming out as soon as we post this particular podcast because I think people are already kind of uh, suggesting that AI should replace doctors to take away the possibility of human error. I read an article, I think last week, I uh, found it extremely, I found it hilarious to be honest, but uh, a machine error is uh, pardonable, a human error is not. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of an awkward, uh, awkward uh, article for me. Even machine error, machines are doing what they've been instructed to do. Even their learning so far is based on the inputs, the feed, what they've been yes, trained yeah. to do. So human error comes in or potentially even there. So yeah, uh, as a human, I could, I could in an error, as an error, switch off the machine. So the machine stops the form, yeah, yeah. human error, right? <laughs> or trip over a plug point and the wire comes out, human error. Machine stops performing, performing an operation right in the middle of it and then and somebody just wanted to charge a phone. <laughs> <different, laughs> views on this, but Moving away from AI, what are some of the other technologies? What what is being talked about in the profession today? I mean, so if there are any students watching this, uh, and uh, I know you're actively interviewing, and uh, anybody who wants to join ADPL, please call Mani tomorrow. Use my reference. I don't have a code. <laughs> but uh, what are some of the other technologies that you will tell the students who are watching this or will get to watch this uh, that they should learn before they kind of go and join the profession? So technology, I think um, 3D printing, mm -hmm. it's got phenomenal potential. I'm reading about where light fixtures, for example, and there are people who are printing the lenses. So what that does is within a single fixture with let's say five light engines, you could have each one with a different lens, but it's just one form factor. So within that little piece of acrylic plastic or what it, whatever uh, PMMA, it could be printed in such a way that this particular one is a wall washer, this is a narrow beam and this is a wide beam. So all you have to do is if you want to change the lighting effect, you could just swap that out and put in a new one. So that's pretty... Uh, but on that note, uh, as we end this session, any, any message you want to send out to those young professionals who are going to be listening in, uh, who are going to be looking at this maybe patiently so for the 30-35 minutes that this is going to be question. So I think my it's going to be pretty universal and generic. You've got to observe things around you. Architecture and when I say architecture I'm also it can encompasses all the allied fields as well. It's all about seeing what is around you and designing for comfort or to serve a certain function. So you've got to just be aware of things around you without which details. Is it going to be how does one experience the space? How does one experience it during the day, evening, night, from outside, from within the space? It's it's very, um, how do I put it? It's, it's straightforward. However, you can add lots of twists to it but you've got to be observant enough to understand what is lacking or what can be added. So that's, that's I think, observe, study the world around you and you'll just become a better designer. Observe and don't be over-reliant on AI tools. 
design studios uh, let's make this more fun interactive and bring to you what you wish to hear about if there are questions please post them we will try to respond to as many as we can and uh, looking forward to seeing you again real soon thank you so much